You're most welcome to the meeting under the word. We have Markus Jelinek with us. And perhaps you have seen um, in the thumbnail that uh, light um, has been uh, uh, in the German, the, the the word light has been written um, not like a noun, but an adjective. I hope that you can uh, be inspired spiritually today. I want to present, introduce uh, Markus. I have uh, known Markus since uh, I was in my um, home church and uh, his father worked as a pastor in our church. Then Markus, Markus was in a youth project uh, called Jugend auf Achse, active, active youth. Bottrop, that's a long time ago. I can remember you as well. When we had crisis in Bad Oeynhausen, we would call you and you would come over and save us. I think there were others too who helped. This was a kind of a precursor of One Year for Jesus. And... Uh, we, we learned a lot at that time for, for um, youth activities. And then you decided to study theology. Can you say sen two sentences about uh, um, your career? You came here for your master's, right? Exactly. I uh, started uh, studying theology in Bochum. Um, that's the Ruhr region. I married there. I was active in a church planting project. And then I studied at uh, the public university, Protestant theology and religious studies. And when I finished my bachelor's, I came over to Friedenso. You know, yeah, from, uh, I, I was here from 2010 to 2012. Yeah, that's an interesting, uh, um, genesis of your career. Where, where are you, Pastor, now? I am in the, the beautiful town of Düsseldorf and its surroundings, um, together with several colleagues uh, in, in a region. I've been there for a couple of years. I started in Hanover and I'm in North Rhine-Westphalia now. You also teach here, right? As I understand, you're also teaching uh, courses uh, via Zoom. The students and you, you meet in Zoom. What do you teach here? Exactly. My course is called uh, the, the History um, of New Testament Times. So we look at what happened around the time of Jesus, the centuries before and after in, uh, in the context uh, historically uh, in, in, in society, what politics that happened around, how all this happened at that time. That's what the course is all about. I have one more question. Since we have a couple of students here who study theology, how does the how does the work of a pastor actually look like in a lockdown situation? Can you describe this, please? Yes. There's lots of home office, home office with children as well. But of course, we also have worship services and we have to organize them. And committee meetings are continuing per Zoom or we, or we call by phone. Sometimes we write letters um, for, 
<laughs> for instance, I, I learned to, to use the, uh, the, uh, uh, a new function in, in Word where you can print many, uh, many letters uh, of the same kind. Before you start with your devotional, I'd like to pray. Father in heaven, thank you that we can um, spend this time listening to what Marcus has prepared. May you open us, give us open ears and a clear spirit to uh, realize what you want to say into our time. And we may, that we may recognize how you are um, working in our own lives personally. Amen. I brought you some sentences from the uh, prophet of Isaiah, Isaiah 61 and 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The motive that Isaiah is uh, utilizing in his wonderful imagery, light and darkness, evil and uh, the good light is for life for sun it represents growth warmth darkness perhaps we know dark valleys somewhere perhaps inside us uh, it is night perhaps we are afraid that when 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 it's dark outside all these are instances where a light and darkness um, are referred to that's not only something something that uh, Ellen white writes about even in star wars um, these this imagery is being used light is used for what is um, is what is uh, desirable. Ex Oriente looks from the east comes light. Let's uh, look away from the west to the east. That has been the uh, motto of the humanities uh, for a long time. Um, where there's light, there is something desirable. When we look into this text of Isaiah and listen to him and ask what, what uh, could be the answer, the answer to this uh, conflict between light and darkness, his answer is very clear. Your light has come. The light is moving. It's not just somewhere, it is on the move. It is not going just somewhere, it is coming to us. So that we do benefit from it. This is light on the move. One could say this light is alive. And yes, indeed, the light that the Bible is describing is uh, um, physically speaking um, not uh, a wave nor a, a particle it's a person it's uh, jesus who is the light of the world and he says if you follow me you will not walk in the darkness but you will have the light of life i believe we all know the shadows we have uh, blind spots, we may have uh, a dirty past, um, we may have uh, um, 
we have uh, um, we know the shadows of life and all the darkness that is in it sin suffering death all this all this we do encounter this darkness is a reality in our world but we have someone who can respond to all our questions jesus Jesus, who says I'm the light of the world, who is shining into the darkness. Jesus is the answer to our darkness. No matter where we are, we are at the moment, physically, health-wise, or in terms of our personal faith, emotionally, he is coming, he is on the way. Our light is coming. He has set um, himself into motion. When Jesus says, the one who follows me is not walking into darkness, but uh, has the light of life. That doesn't mean that we ourselves are the light. But Jesus promises that we will have the light of life. And even in Isaiah, it is uh, about um, becoming light in, in the German language. Uh, the, the imperative shine sounds like become, become like light. In Friedensau, we have this, in, in Friedensau, we have this inscription at uh, Wilhelm Michael House. Arise, shine, mache dich auf, werde Licht. Why is it not a noun? We are not the light, but we are to, to be bright like light. We are to be uh, um, brightened. We are to become um, um, bright. I have to think about uh, a word in the German language that is called Lichtung. Um, that's a spot in the in the midst of a dark forest that is that is uh, uh, bright. Why? Because there's light there. No. Um, a lichtung is bright because uh, um, there are f there are few um, stumbling blocks. There are no there are no. Um, no trees and other things there that could absorb the light. So this is how we are supposed to be. We are to become like light. Now, um, in German, we can do nice word plays with light because uh, we can even say, we can even say that somebody has uh, lighted here in the sense that there's little remaining that the light is coming in into the hair. We are to um, exude God's light, not from ourselves, but because Jesus' light is uh, abundant enough. What we can contribute is that uh, there is little that is between us and the light. Arise, shine. It's an imperative. Perhaps we can contribute removing hindrances. Perhaps we have to separate from something that is absorbing light and that is enhancing darkness. I think this can be a good experience to try something like that, to uh, uh, remove things in our lives that uh, are strengthening the darkness and therefore opening for the light. One example, perhaps. Perhaps uh, you know, um, you know, in your family home, there might be a, a garage or one room where there are lots of things and uh, um, fully stuffed and there are, there are more and more things there. 
at some point though um, it it is uh, there's some event uh, that triggers me to to sort out things I actually it's fun to sort out things it looks much better than month some things can be thrown away and in the end the garage can be um, can be uh, um, our, our rain is arranged over, uh, fully and only those things that remain um, are important the other unimportant things have gone and there is light arise Isaiah says arise and uh, since you are here, you have done this already. You have uh, arisen and you click play. Yes, we are not only to um, sit around, but arise. Um, it's like uh, saying to yourself, if we, if we have uh, um, decided to be in a certain situation, we can try to do the best out of it, whether in, in our studies or in life in general. If I'm here already, I can do the best out of it, right? So I want to uh, call you to arise and take some time for, take some quiet time to sort out something in your life. Time for praying, arise. Read, read in the Bible or another good uh, book that helps you um, answer some of your questions. And arise, look for people who help you, who can support you. You don't have to do it all alone. Arise. Shine. And, and never forget, God's light is coming. This is uh, what we can trust in, and this is why we can arise. God bless you. And... Let us have a short moment of uh, uh, quietness and then uh, I will pray. Our great God, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you are the one who is moving, who is uh, moving towards us. Thank you that you want to meet me uh, time again, every, every day, every morning. And I want to thank you that we can refer to you with our questions, uh, challenges. Thank you that you want to be a light in our lives. That you want to be um, the strength to do th the right things that you want um, everything to be bright in us that we can shine through your light I thank you that you're giving us this this day and I ask you for your blessing Amen many thanks Marcus for your devotional and your inspiring words. And that uh, you have motivated us to be active. Um, we, and it is good to know that we can uh, steer, we can steer ourselves by becoming quiet and then doing um, doing the, uh, the right things in our lives. 
Uh, greetings also to your fellow pastor, Markus Trautfetter, in your region. May it be a blessing where you serve. Uh, some more information. Renate will do Shabbat Shalom, um, the devotional at 7.30 on Friday in English. On Sabbath, as usual, we have the uh, um, worship service both in English and in German. You'll get uh, the email link. Of course, you can also just check Friedensal Media and you'll get all the information. I wish you a good week. After this, um, this devotional, Tobias will uh, inform us a little bit about Corona matters. Tobias uh, will join and I'm saying goodbye. God bless you. I'm saying hello and thank you for um, the transition, Ditma. Well, current Corona news, they are not even 12 hours old. Perhaps you heard some, some news late yesterday evening um, here on the ground. I'm happy that we don't have further infections. We have uh, a zero incidence at Friedensau in the uh, district. Um, the incidence is going down as well. So we're around 117. I, I didn't check. We are realizing that the lockdown in which we are is reducing the, the, the numbers a bit. That's why Chancellor Merkel together with the uh, regional uh, prime ministers um, decided that we're going on with the current regulations until February 14. Con contact uh, uh, rules, one-to-one -one meetings only. Um, so no visiting in groups. Um, most uh, businesses are closed except uh, supermarkets. There are two or several, several enforcements, further enforcements tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be a, a new regional uh, uh, ruling for Saxony Anhalt. The rules will most probably say which masks will have to be uh, utilized in uh, in uh, in public transport and in shops. So when you go to shops or you use public transport, you need this uh, medical mask or FFP2 masks as a university. We ordered um, a larger quantity of these masks. We are waiting for um, the delivery. Of course, uh, um, the uh, the business uh, distributing these is uh, <laughs> is on the phone all the time. Um, everybody is looking for them. If you want to be sure. Try to see if you get them in the uh, in the drug stores. We haven't uh, fully decided. We haven't fully decided how to use them. I think for the time being, general masks, the masks like uh, um, like uh, until this time are fine. When we have exams with people in rooms, we'll use these FF, these medical masks or FFP2 masks. And we do hope that we can uh, also provide you with these. We still have more than a week until that. 
otherwise there are new rules for worship services we'll have to wait what uh, the federal state says at the moment it is said that if the incidence is more than a hundred in the in the uh, um, district um, yeah there will be uh, no worship services so only digital ones uh, there are changes in mobility as well um, the request to everyone is not to not to uh, travel this is interesting because uh, uh, schools will be closed and kindergartens all all those who work in who work in offices um, probably are discussing with their um, with the departmental leaders um, how they can go into home office. Otherwise, we are happy that the vaccinations in the old people's home um, is uh, going well. There is enough vaccine and uh, it seems everyone has has received these vaccinations well. Of course, vaccinations for other persons um, are are still um, are still going on very uh, rarely, um, only for special cases. I want to encourage you to. Uh, to uh, walk on um, with uh, with courage. There, are, there's telephone. We can uh, ring up each other. We don't always have to see each other. So um, ring up your um, your friends and and others to ask them how they're doing. Use the telephone list that you have and be in contact with with uh, a maximum of one person at a time and uh, and uh, be in contact mostly by the media i hope we'll meet um we'll meet in the in the worship service digitally stay healthy god bless you